Yeah. Can I go? You're going to start. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's start the official part uh, streaming now. So my name is Jelko Filipin. I work as a, a QA engineer for Wikimedia Foundation. And welcome to our browser automation workshop. So today we will be talking about a lot of stuff, uh, but um, we will we will we will mention um, we will have a, a few sections. So we will have a part. Well, where I'll show the feature that we want to um, to work on, then we'll show some some uh, some code, and after uh, I show you some code, I'll run it so you you see how the test runs, and then I'll ask you to to help me write another test, and then we'll implement the test. So that's like a quick overview of the workshop. So uh, a little bit of housekeeping note. So uh, if you um, if you didn't already read the meetings page, so I've I've worked very hard to to explain everything, uh, all the setup needed for this workshop there, and if you didn't set up everything so far, uh, please stop now, uh, and pay attention to the workshop. Uh, there will be time after the workshop where uh, me or Chris or somebody else will be able to help you, and if you have any problems with with installation. So um, let me show you. The feature that we'll talk about. So I'll share my screen. Okay, a bit recursion there. Can you see my screen? Everything okay? Looks good. Okay. So uh, we will be talking about this Wikilog feature, and it's a it's a nice and, and fun feature. You have to be logged in to see it, and you have to be on a user page of another user. So I'm logged in as my uh, official account, and I'm on a page. You lost your screen, Jocko. Oh? Share, share once more. OK, let me try it again. Can you see it now? Oh. Wait, maybe I have to do something here. Yeah. Uh, maybe I should give the screen to Jelko. So, can you see it now? Nope. So you don't see. You are not seeing now uh, Jelko screen. No, we are seeing no, Jelko's photo. Mm. Now we see Mike. That was it. That's it. Or was? Ah, uh, was. Kim, do you know what to do? Um, like no. Well, we can see Jelko's screen when Jelko's talking now. Yeah, you just talk, and the rest of us. Okay, so if I talk, then you see my screen. Basically, yes. yes. Okay. So I'll, I'll just keep on talking. Let me know if something's wrong, because I don't see the Hangout window while I'm showing this. So if anything's wrong, just let me know. OK, so I hope you can see my screen now. Um, <clears throat> so let's start from, from the beginning. So I'm talking about this. Sorry. <coughs> so today we will be talking about Wikilove feature. It, it's a feature that allows you to send appreciation to another user. Uh, to, to see the feature, you have to be logged in. So I'm logged in as my official account. And I'm on a user page of the Selenium user that we use for testing. So as you can see, it's completely messed up. This is a test server, by the way. If you don't have an account here, please create one. Uh, you will need it. Uh, like if anything else fails, you you will be able to use it like for manual testing. So 
when you are, and let me open, uh, let me show you how it looks when I'm on my page. So when I'm on, on a page of another user, there's this little heart icon here, and that's and uh, that's way to assess the Wikilove feature. When I'm on my page, there's no heart icon because I can't send Wikilove to myself. Uh, when you click the heart icon, uh, a window opens and there's several options of sending appreciation to another user. So if, for example, why would you send uh, this Wikilove thing? Uh, can somebody mute? I hear some, some noise in the background. Is anybody not muted? Uh, Kim, can you take a look if somebody recently joined and muted them? Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll assume that Kim will take care of it. Uh, and please, if you just recently joined, please mute yourself. There's a button of uh, top right, so it doesn't make bigger noise. So when you open Wikilove feature, there are several options. Uh, barn stars, food and drink, kittens, and make your own. So the reason you would send uh, somebody this wiki love, like it's like a gift when you're working on an article and somebody makes a nice edit or something like this and improves your article, then and you want to send appreciation, um, it creates like this good community feeling. You can send them a barn star, food or drink. My favorite one, of course, is beer. Or of course, there's kittens because internet and you can make your own uh, add an, uh, uh, image and make up a header title message well so this is the feature that we are going to test so for example let's let's try. you have to click preview so we picked barn star just left this original one enter some test message uh, there's a preview here, and we can send it. it. It didn't work yesterday when I was testing it, but let's see if it works now. Okay, it works fine. So when you open, so we are on Selenium user, uh, uh, um, user page, and we can see I sent beer to the user yesterday and barn start today. And this is from previous workshop, people sending kittens and everything. All right. So this is the feature itself. Let me see my notes. Yeah, so uh, why did we pick this, uh, this feature for this workshop? So uh, first, because it's fun. But, um, there, this is probably one of the most uh, like entertaining features on, on, on MediaWiki software. Another one is because it's uh, fairly complicated, uh, but yet uh, simple to automate. So there's uh, the pop-up appears. There's a lot of options, and every every option has sub sub options. There's uh, select boxes and and links and text fields, and there's there's this flow of of um, of steps that you have to do. You, you can't like um, this couldn't be automated in a unit test because you need to open a browser. You have to log in. You have to go to another user's page. You have to click this heart icon. You have to select a few things from here. So so it, it involves JavaScript and everything else. So it will so of course JavaScript behaves differently in different browsers. So this is just a perfect feature uh, for us to, to work for this to work on for this workshop so for example what could we test here so let's let's turn this back to, to the owners this is a workshop not not a, a lecture so um, could anybody let me know on a like a test idea what should we test here like if so, we do something what should happen like in a, a couple of examples. You can start with one, of course. So, and feel free to share your screen. I'm not sure how good that will work. Anybody? You can just you can just talk, and I'll I'll share my screen and, and try to reproduce. Well, I know what I want to do. Don't we already have some tests? We do. Well, I can sh I can show that. Yeah. So let me let me show you what we have. So let me just see my notes. Uh, 
Yeah. Okay. So I, I can I can go for uh, I can go forward um, and and show you some code and okay. so we we already have some tests here. Um, since Prince Chris suggested it, we can we can start there. So uh, Chris funds, please. Oh sure sure sure. So let me see here. So what I see is tests for the Barn Star, for food and drink, and for the kittens. And that suggests that we might need a test. Anybody see what's missing in that list? So I, I recommend everybody to select Zelko's uh, screen on the Hangout so you don't see the rest of us when we talk. Yeah. So yeah, I forgot to say that. So if you click my screen at the bottom, you'll just see me. And, and when somebody else talks, you'll be able to hear them, but the screen won't change. Is this better, or should it be bigger? I think it should be bigger. I can't really read it very okay. well. OK, let's try bigger. So this is my setup when I, when I pair with Rachel. Uh, but. Okay, just a second. You'll need to analyze phones. I'll, I'll I'll increase to twenty, and we'll see there. So twenty. Is this better? Bigger? Yes, it is for me. I don't know about for other people, but it's better. Anybody else? Can you can you read this text, or should I make it bigger? I think it is good. I can see it. Okay. Okay. So this is this is the code. Let me let me just do one more uh, thing, real quick. There's the bug in the ID that uh, disables one of my custom settings. Okay, here it is. So uh, let me talk about this. So this is Cucumber, and this is the way we write tests. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty much English. It's really it's structured, but it still read likes reads like English. Uh, at the at the top, um, don't be like for now. You can ignore this. Uh, it just need it just wants to say that we have to be logged in for this test to work, and that we want to run the test at this uh, site. So it says we are testing Wikilove feature. That's explicit enough, I think. Background uh, steps will run before every scenario. So this is like if you've used another uh, test framework, this is something like setup. So given I'm logged in, we have to be logged in. When I visit user page of this Selenium user 2, and I click Wikilove, this icon. So this will be executed every time before the rest of the steps execute, because we need some setup. Uh, then we have Barnstorm options. Food and trick options, and kitten options. So we'll go for one. When I click barn stars, I should see barn stars checkbox, and I should see message text field. So let, let me show you what it's all about. So I am logged in. I'm on a user, another user page. I click the Wikilove. I click barn star, and there should be. Let me just check what it says exactly. Barn star uh, checkbox and message text field. So. Uh, there's the checkbox, but there's there's a text field. Okay, so I, I would guess maybe this is what's meant by the checkbox. I didn't write the code as as probably you can notice, uh, and we go and we have some similar setup for for other uh, for other features. So we have food and drinks and kittens. So let's see what's here. So we have barn signs, food and drinks, and kittens. Um, let me let me show you how the tests run. So, and while the tests are running, it'll take a while. Um, please think like, what could we test next? So, this is the way we run the test. I just quickly check if I'm still in a hangout. Yes. Okay. Great. You should you should see Firefox pop, popping up at the bottom. Then it will appear on the screen. Mm 
the browser will go to this test site that we call labs This usually works faster, but now I'm on a 3G connection, so it's working, but it's not as fast as usual. You can see uh, the screen, uh, the login screen, logging in. We, we logged in as Selenium user. We will go to Selenium user 2, user page. The test will click this lovely heart icon, click the barnstarn and do the same, for, check if these options are there, and do the same for food and drink and kittens. So while the tests are running, um, anybody bold enough to propose another test we should automate? Like I have plenty of ideas, and, and, and I'm sure Chris does, uh, but I would like to here for somebody else. And Kim can even cheat because he was at the previous workshop and we had really similar examples. Do I hear somebody proposing the next test? Go ahead. Can we not test for the barn star and for the kittens and for the food and drink? What's missing? And make your own. Make your own. Make your own. Yeah, okay, very good. That's that's one option. Okay, so you saw you saw the test running. So we have three scenarios, all of them passed, twenty steps, two minutes, whatever. So the next step would be make your own. So if if we go the route, so if you have barn stars, food and drink, kittens and make your own. Um, I have I have another idea, so let's go even further. So I have a simpler test in mind. So we can pick one of those like we and automate it. So on this page, like what could we test here? Like my idea was uh, anybody has an idea? Uh Jelko, Manu here. Do you have a Wikilove uh, icon on your on your profile or no. No. That's okay. real. Yeah. So that, that's what I thought we can test, but if you don't have <laughs> So you, you cannot send Wikilove to yourself. Yes, but that's an excellent test, right? So if uh, if something's broken and Wikilove appears here, there will be there will be a bug, right? So we could write a test that would check if this heart icon appears on your user page, mm -hmm. and it should not. And then we could check if it appears here on another user page, and it should be there. So that's a couple of tests, right? Yes. And then another test that. So we, we started from this screen and, and uh, with the options, but uh, can anybody think of an even simpler test? Like, so I, I, I went way, way back, so when we are at the page and even like checking if the feature is there or not, so when we check that the feature is there, like one test that I would propose is just clicking it and seeing if this pop-up appears, right? That's another feature, so if we, we c even we can't test all these sub options if the pop-up doesn't appear for some reason. For example, let's make a wild guess that w when in i6 you click a heart icon, some JavaScript like breaks and this pop-up doesn't appear. Like just a wild guess. Like I, I wouldn't expect that any, any to happen in a, especially not in i6, but who knows. Um, I'm not uh, sure. Jelko, I just, I just want to mention that I got a question via IRC from someone that is watching the stream. So it is, I, I pasted it here in, there, in the chat. Okay. Uh, uh, can you read? Uh, because if yes. I go to the Hangout, then like... Yeah, no, I got it. Uh, he wanted to know about the, about the page objects, and I told him we'll be covering page objects here in a little while. Yes, page objects coming soon. There will be page objects falling from the sky really, really soon. Um, we, we are focusing on, on the feature right now, but there, there will be enough page objects, trust me, really soon. Uh, so we, I think we have enough, uh, enough ideas for now, and um, I will 
propose uh, to write them down at the moment. Uh, so, is this somebody suggesting something else? Okay, I guess not. Um, so, uh, feel free to, to type with me and uh, follow what I, I do. And um, I would even suggest you do so. So, uh, by the end of this workshop, you will have new code. And you will be, depending on how, for, for, uh, how far along you, you went with your uh, Git and Garrett setup, you'll be able to submit it. Like you, You'll be able to have your changes either only on your machine. You could submit it to our GitHub repository or to our Garrett repository. So let me close this too. So let's open my favorite IDE. And let's write some scenarios. Um, I would, so c can we have a, a uh, should we have a vote? Should just uh, like pick one and, and implement it? I think it'll be better just for me to pick one. So let's let's start with like a really really simple test. Um, let's move it way up here. So we are in this Wikilab feature file. Uh, let's make a new scenario. So we can uh, Wikilab icon is visible at another user user page. Mm, that doesn't sound really good. So please help me with English. So Wikilab icon is visible at is better. Oh, so we have yes. Yeah, so this would. The background assumes that we already clicked Wikilab, so we'll have to move that a bit down. Um, no, so let's then. So let me let me rephrase. So given I'm logged in and I visit user page of Selenium user two, and I click Wikilab. So this is what our background already did. So it, it opened Wikilab. So before we like we do some refactoring to the to this page, let let's make it sim simpler. So when I click Wikilab. Then we will just check that the Wikilove pop up appeared. So, Wikilove. Uh, given I'm logged in, when I visit the user page of Selenium User 2 and I click Wikilove, then. So this is really, really simple, but it's uh, it's an important test to make. So for example, when we click this, if this window didn't appear, none of the rest of the test will make any sense, right? Because we, we couldn't select anything if this test breaks. So I think it's important for us to have this test. If you have any questions, please let me know if I'm, like, if I'm not making any sense, if I'm going too fast. Um, Let's run this for now. So we we have some cucumber cucumber test written right now. And let's just run it. So I, I have a question. Through. I have a question. Go so ahead. like when when you do it, it looks like very easy. It feels like the the software will be able to digest just anything you type, but how do we know what what the software understands or doesn't understand? Um, I'm going to show you that. So this is this is exactly. So we were like we were just finished the first part of the workshop where we talked about this Wikilove and what should be tested and and all this stuff. And now we are going into, into code, the second part of the of the workshop. And now I will show you how to how to get from this like almost magic like English to something that will actually run some browsers. Is okay. that was that the question? Uh, maybe so. For me to understand, what for this phase is it good enough if someone else than you understands another human understands what you want to explain? That's the, that's the goal of this phase. Yes. So yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the re reminder. So um, let me let me tell. Like I'll, I'll just uh, say a sentence or two about Cucumber. So Cucumber is this test automation tool that helps us run tests. 
but uh, in my opinion, uh, its uh, biggest feature is communication. So it's a communication tool. It allows us to um, it allows uh, two people to communicate. So, uh, for example, me, uh, I, I know how to how to make browsers cry and sing, and somebody else knows all about some software and how it should behave. So the two of us, for example, Kim knows all about Wikilab, and the two of us could just sit down or exchange a few emails with with these scenarios and agree on how this uh, feature should behave or how this software should behave. And then it's really easy for me to make it, to, to make the code run. Uh, but the hard part is like thinking about good scenarios and what should be tested and what should be automated. Um, was, did I, like, does it make more sense now? Yes. In the meantime, Carol is asking another question. So she says, how many steps are necessary in the test case for a scenario to pass? Do you have to have when, then, um, and words to trigger the right code? OK, excellent question. So uh, you should have exactly uh, one step, uh, either a given, either a when or a then. Uh, and uh, end steps are optional. So uh, like, to, to have a test, you should have uh, to, to like, Every scenario should have at least uh, one step, right? Like, because it's not a scenario, anyways. Uh, I, uh, in if it doesn't have any steps, right? It's not a scenario. So um, you don't have to have like all three, given when and then. Just one or two would be enough. And end steps, so end steps are completely optional. Does it answer the question? I will assume it does. Silence means approval. OK, so um, for thank example. You, thank you, yes, says Carol. OK, so for example, like in, in this case, let's let's make a story about it. So Kim and I talk about this Wikilove feature, and something should be automated. And he says, oh, I, I think we should like check if the window appears, because the rest of the steps will fail if, if this window doesn't appear at all, this Wikilove window. And I say, okay, like I'm, I'm, I write this test down and I ask him, like, does it make sense? He says, yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted to say. And then Cucumber is good because it will lead you the way. So you just run it. So unlike exec Cucumber features, it, it, um, you run one scenario. So if we provide um, a line number, it will run just this scenario. So we can type either 9 or 10, and it will run just this new scenario. So let's just make sure we, I we, save this. In case it's important, we cannot see what, well, I cannot see what you are typing on the console. Oh, let me make it bigger. Of, uh, wrong shortcut. So it, it is important, and I'll make my text in the console way bigger. So. This is good. Just for my computer to okay. Can you read now? Yes. Okay. So bundle exec cucumber features Wikilove. Let me just make it like say half of the screen or something like that. Okay. Bundle exec cucumber features Wikilove feature uh, column nine, meaning let's execute just this one scenario. So let's run it. If it needs to be bigger, just let me know. I, I forget. Good. Opens login page. Oh, it's a bit faster this time. Logs in as Selenium user. Goes to Selenium user 2 page clicks the Wikilove icon, and then it says, oh, let me make this bigger. So it says, we have one scenario and one undefined step. And it even helps you. It says, you can implement, implement the step definitions like this. And it gives you real code that you can copy paste. So let's just do that. 
so now we are going from Cucumber to Ruby, and we will soon get to page objects. So, one, so uh, Kim said for the last, last workshop, people were a bit confused with all the, the screens involved. So this is one screen, Cucumber feature file. Another screen would be a Ruby steps file. So let's open it. It lives in step definitions. We can have steps. As you can see from .rb, it's, um, uh, it's a Ruby file. We can just paste line to the bottom. We'll figure out later on if we need to move it. And that's it for now. So we just copy pasted this code to a steps file. Now we are getting into Ruby. And again, let's see what, what will Cucumber say now. We run the, the uh, exactly same command, bundle exec. So not to get into a lot of details, this bundle exec Cucumber is just the way we run the tests and features, we call a feature, is path to the, uh, to the feature file. And column 9 says just run scenario that, uh, in line 9. Firefox opens, opens again. You'll see this Selenium user logging in all the time. Going to Selenium user page, clicking. OK, so now something else happened. So previously, Cucumber said, uh, oh, you don't even have a, any code in the step. And now it says, oh, you have code, but it's pending. And I'll show you now what's pending. So we don't actually have any code in this step. So this is a step. So for example, this is another step. And this is page object, page object code. Uh, and we will do something similar in this step. So for example, now it's pending. And let's just remove that code and do something else. So we can allow Windows appear. So we will assume we can we can like take inspiration for another step. Um, I'll, so now we are going. Uh, uh, now I'll I'll say a few words about this page object pattern. Um, it's just a fancy name for the way we organize test code. Page object pattern says that all the the code. Uh, about a page should be in one place, in this case, in, uh, in one file and in one class. Uh, I'll show you the, the implementation of the class later on. For now, let's just see how we use it. So we say we are on Wikilab page. And in this previous example, they say this Wikilab message element should be visible. So we'll do something similar now. We'll say. page we can so yeah, while Joko is typing I'll mention that one of the really one of the reasons that we chose this framework is because um, uh, it's uh, it offers a uh, uh, prompts all along the way and once you have a scenario and you run that scenario, the framework will tell you exactly what needs to go in the steps for that test. And then when you put that in place and you run the test, the framework will tell you exactly what steps are pending. And now Joko is writing a real step um, that he'll go through, but uh, the framework will always tell you what your next move is, is going to be. It's a very, very convenient way to create these tests. Yes, and it usually doesn't take an hour to, to write a simple test. Uh, I'm going slowly now and, and talking a lot, and uh, but uh, this is exactly the same workflow that I have. But when you when you get like into into the flow, it like 
you can do this in, in just a few minutes. So this, like, what we will do today in in a couple of hours, it usually takes like five or ten minutes. So let's talk about this code for, for a moment. Um, what, like, I, I forgot to mention, uh, like, what, uh, why do we use this page object pattern at all? So it allows us to separate. Um, Test text uh, test execution from test implementation. So, for example, we will define some elements on the on this page, and uh, for example, we call a window. We will define it. It's not defined yet. I, I can even show you. So let, let's go to the declaration. So this is a simple uh, page object. So uh, we have a class called Wikilove page. We we include some stuff at the at the top, but let's let's uh, not uh, spend time on that at the moment. Uh, this should be familiar. So it's user selenium to user. It's part of the URL. The rest of the URL is stored somewhere else. Um, and here um, we have all the elements of this page in one place. And wherever else in the code we need to do something with this page. It always calls this code. So, for example, if this bar star select element, let me let me show you. So, if this bar star bar star select element, this thing here, if it changes from select list to radio buttons to links to whatever, and we have thousands of test tests using this element, we will have to change it in just one place. So here, we will change the select list to a link, a div, a text field, or whatever it is. The One name thing. will stay the same. Uh, George is asking, Wikilove window is missing? Yes, and that's that's why, where I'm getting. So really, really good uh, observation. We'll get there. So for example, as let me let me finish the 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 explanation of the, of the um, of this uh, page object, and then we'll go to the implementation of the test. So, uh, when if if this uh, if anybody that's worked on software knows that software changes a lot, and everybody that tested software and did some um, uh, test automation knows how frequently tests break because something changed. So, for example, this select list, so a designer goes to to a, like a meetup and. Everybody says, "Oh no, select lists are so like yesterday. We have to use divs, and he changes all select lists, uh, lists to divs, and all of your tests break. And uh, if you have this code like scattered around, if we here, if we said on wiki love page, you find this select box with this ID, and then it should be visible. And if we had this code like scattered all over our code, when when the change happens, and it will, it will it will happen, just a matter of time." We will have to go through all the code and make all the changes, and that's really prone to error because we always forgot to forget to change somewhere. Uh, that's the reason we uh, extract. We have another layer, so we have this cucumber text, like describing what we're, we're what we're testing. We have some code uh, that actually runs browsers, and then we have page objects that are like uh, repositories of these objects that we deal with. So, for example, this barn star select element at the moment is select list with an ID. If the ID changes to something else, or if it's no longer ID but a name or a class or whatever, we just need to change it in one place. And all the tests just call this barn star and select, and they don't care if it's a select list, if it has an ID, or and what value it is. Like it just calls this element. And as George. Um, nicely um, noticed, this Wikilove window is not defined here. So we are on Wikilove page, and there is no Wikilove window. So Wikilove message, Wikilove spinner. Let's see what happens if we run this code. So at the moment, we just made up this code. This is, uh, I think, um, uh, Chris, please, please correct me if I'm wrong, but um, um, cheesy Jeff Morgan, right? He calls this. Um, Wishful coding or something like this. Let's just like make up the code and we'll make it work later on. So uh, we just want this code to work. Like we, we we want to have a nice API. 
on Wikilove page, Wikilove window element should be visible. That's what we want. And we'll take care of the implementation later on. So let's see how this works. Let's run the test again. Let's see what Cucumber will tell us. So the same command again, bundle exec Cucumber, features, Wikilove feature, line number nine. Uh, while the test is running, uh, feel free to ask questions. And in any case, we're preparing questions because uh, in a few minutes we'll have already passed the first hour, and I think we can have a little break, but not break. I mean, prepare your questions for that break. Yes. Okay, and now Cucumber complaint. Let's see what it says. So it says undefined method Wikilove window element for Wikilove page. And we already know that. So, But still, as you can see, you can just make up code, and Cucumber will complain when something is not working. So let's implement the element. So we call it Wikilove window. Let's just copy paste there on typos. Um, it should go to the bottom. It's sort automatically. Let's inspect the window. So now we have to dig into the page and figure out what this win what this window really is. So let's see. Um, any any modern any contemporary browser has an inspector on fi uh, Firefox from recently has a built-in one and the famous one is uh, Firebug, and Chrome, recent IEs, Opera Safari. Er all browsers have built-in page inspectors. Some are not enabled by default. I think on, on Safari you have to enable it, but it's just uh, like a setting in, in an options. So just right-click right the element and uh, that you want to inspect and go to Inspect Element in the Context menu. Let's see what it says. So, oh, it's a div, right? So it's a div with a class, so there's a lot of things going on style of course there are no uh, there are no um, IDs so let's see yeah I think uh, let's see uh, what happens if we just use this huge class so it's a div with this huge class element is there anybody not familiar with the document object model, the DOM, and how um, uh, elements on a page are identified? Yeah, Jean-Fred, uh, IDs are preferred. ID is, is the best way to identify a page, an element in a page. Um, and the reason for that is because according to the, the W3C standard, IDs must be unique per page. So anytime you have an ID value, you can be guaranteed that you're addressing the correct element. However, they're not required. Not all elements will have IDs. We prefer that we have them, but we can get to these elements in any number of ways. Um, you can identify these elements uh, by class, by um, name, by title, uh, any number of different ways. Um, and in fact, the uh, the framework that we're using has a really lovely page in GitHub, um, which uh, I'll find I a link. To. Yeah. Uh, well, let let let, link, uh, let uh, Chris find uh, the link. Um, so there's plenty of documentation about all this stuff. Uh, yeah, document object model and is a bit out of scope uh, for for this workshop, but. Uh, we can still cover it like in one-to-one in -one sessions or, or later on. So let's see what we did. So we, we inspected this div. We found that it has a class, that, uh, that it is a div. At all. Also, we inspected the element, found that it's a div, that it has a class. Uh, we already decided the name. We just checked that it's a div, and it has this class. Um, and now this, co this code should work. Let's see how it works. So let's collapse everything. Let's we'll just leave this one that we are working on. Let's run it. See what happens. There's a 50% chance that we did something wrong. 
especially with the live codings. In the meantime, yes, there's one question from Karima. Uh, she says, in the future, the Wikilove page object and Wikilove's feature will be in the same folder of the extension, or all tests have to be in the same project of browser test? That's an excellent question. So, uh, no, this browser test uh, report, well, no, depending on what I answer. So, browser test repository is like an example repository that we use when uh, when an extension or like a feature from MediaWiki Core doesn't already have tests like in, in their repository. So, we, we are still selling this browser automation to MediaWiki developers and just a couple of repositories have uh, have Selenium tests included in their repository. So, to answer the question, it, Selenium tests could be either in a uh, in a repository of an extension or like a core feature or whatever, or in this browser test repository or whenever else. Like it doesn't really care. We we can run the code from anywhere. Okay, so. The test. I hope I answered the question. So please re rephrase it if I missed. What's, it. what's usually the best practice for that? The best practice would be uh, to have the code and uh, to have the test code next to the production code. In my opinion, uh, because it helps with version controls. So if you have, if if you wrote a feature and wrote a test and you know that this tests ver works in this commit for this feature. Uh, then you can always check out this this commit later on. Know that the test will pass. And if you have test code in a separate repository or in a separate branch, then you have to set up some kind of tracking. Like, oh, this commit in test repository, like, uh, should tests should all pass if you have this commit in test repository and this commit in production repository. And that's really easy to mess up. So it's just like the simplest thing is to have the test code in the same repository as as production code, in my opinion. So let's just uh, and feel free to to ask uh, follow up questions. Oh, so we had like a timeout uh, error. Let's try it again. So sometimes browser browsers misbehave. Let's see if it'll, it will be better this time. I hope I answered the question. So if you have uh, more questions, let me know. Yes, you did. Okay, so WMF Labs is taking a long time to open, at least for me. Can anybody confirm that WMF Labs work for, works for them? Is it just my machine? Yeah, it works for me. Mm, fails for me. <laughs> so it might be down. Yeah, it's not looking good in Chrome either. So let's try refreshing again. So okay, this is a test me. server. Okay. So I, I got an error on it. Okay, it works fine in Chrome now. Let's try it again. Okay, it's working. Just it's slow. It's it's working at the moment. Let's see what what happens. Okay, so the test passed. This was unexpected from my part. So let's see what we changed so far. And um, like, should we commit this to the repository or not? So I use um, I like um, GitHub for for Mac application to f for viewing diffs. So let's see what we change. Um, so it says we added a new scenario and we added a new line here. So this could be ignored. This the is just white space. The fonts again are small. Oh. Oh, oh, let me see. Here. Not sure if I could make this. It's fine, I think. Try. Okay. 
Can you see better now? Well, not really, but you can guess what is in there. I really it's a little bit small still, I think. Can you make it bigger or not? Let's see. In a lot. Oh, maybe, maybe the maybe the Hangout. My native zooming of macOS. Maybe the Hangout is not picking up. Okay, so let's forget this. Let's let's um, let's move back to here. So what we did, we added this scenario. So just one scenario. Wiki Love window appears um, with one step. We added this step here on Wiki Love page. Wiki Love window element should be visible and we added just one element to the Wikilove page. Uh, so this was pretty simple, right? And, and we made, uh, I think, a pretty good and important test. So quick, quick we checked. Question. Go ahead. Um, so be vi visible, is that a, a reserved word or recognized by page object, or is it defined somewhere else? Yes, let me, let me go there. Excellent question. So um, this is. Yeah, this is a combination of a uh, cucumber feature and page object selenium feature. So yes, this is a reserved word. So here, you, um, the way assertions are done in cucumber, you define an element, and then you define a should. Then, then you type dot should, and then what should be true or false. So here. Uh, we we say it should be visible. So yeah, it's a reserved word. Like for now, let's know. Let's not go deeper. Um, since this test passed, and um, I, I have a saying: uh, never trust a test that you didn't see fail. Uh, I want to see it fail first before I even consider committing it to the repository. Keyword is should not. And I hope I, I wrote it correctly, but we'll see if Cucumber uh, complains. Maybe there's... Cucumber is a very sophisticated uh, assertion library. Um, it allows you to match various assertions in a number of really powerful ways. In general, we only really use two matchers in Cucumbers. We use the word should, and we use the word should not. Um, you can get quite a bit more sophisticated, but should and should not gives us 99% of what we'll, all, what we'll ever need. Correct. You can see the test running. And this one should fail because we changed the assertion. We said that the Wikilove pop-up or window should not, should not be there, and we know it is there. So let's see what happens. And I will trust th this test only and only if I see this fail. fail. Oh, okay, great. So let's see what happened. Expected visible to return false got true. So this is uh, music to my ears. So let's let's go mm -hmm. back to code and see what happened. So this visible. So the, like, how could I make it? You can so we can see both. Okay, great. So. Uh, the error message said, we expected visible to return false and got true. So this be visible piece of code actually calls this visible. Uh, so this, uh, this be visible keyword calls this visible question mark method on this element. And it expected to return false but got true. Meaning, like in in this in this case, meaning that the window we expected window to be visible, um, and we said it shouldn't be visible, but it was visible. So let's fix this test again. So we know. It. So on Wikilo. So did I confuse anybody with with now this making the test fail? Because I think it's really important, but it's a bit confusing. So. Uh, Yes, a couple of days ago I was pairing with Rachel and we created a simple test for something and it looked like this. So it looked good, like it looked like something that will pass and it really it passed. And then I say, okay, let's make it fail first and then it passed again. So this 
this code really didn't check the thing that we wanted it to check. Like we, we made a mistake, and both of us didn't didn't notice the mistake while we were working on the code. So, um, and then like we took a deeper look and figured out there was like we, we made a simple mistake. But if we did, if I didn't in, insist on making the test fail before checking in it in it in, we wouldn't know that the test really doesn't do the, what we wanted it to do, like check this thing. So in this case, we checked that it fails uh, when when we say that the window doesn't appear, and it passes when we say that the window does appear. So we are commit this code. Let's just make a commit. So I use this Git, GitHub for Mac, so, but um, yeah, I'm not sure how to make it bigger. It's, it's not. No, okay. Uh, oh, zoom. No, no I don't think it. No, okay, never, never mind. Um, so we have a new step. We have a, a, a new element in a feature file in in a um, page object, and we have a new feature. And let's just commit. So I'll, I usually just copy paste the the feature and the scenario. Okay, so I'll do, in this case we can just copy paste this scenario as a commit summary. So scenario we can love window appears comment commit I can. We are pretty much done. Uh, I, I'm I'm open. Um, let me just check my notes if I wanted to to, to check something else. Let me answer George's uh, question while you do that. Um, okay. So George, you you asked about um, RSpec versus Cucumber, and they're really they are two entirely separate tools that happen to just play very well together. And there are, there are historical reasons that they play well together, most important of which is when Cucumber got included by default in the Rails project. That, uh, that became very important. So um, Cucumber is the, is the tool that allows us to specify tests in plain English with a given when then statements. And that gives us all the pattern matching and the, uh, the ability to write our tests in some very sophisticated ways in plain English. RSpec, on the other hand, is our assertion library. RSpec gives us the power to say that uh, uh, such a thing that we're testing for is true or not true, that it matches or it doesn't match, that it's visible or it's not visible. These are all steps in RSpec. And it's the page object framework that actually allows us to uh, specify the elements in our pages that we are manipulating in the course of our tests. Uh, Cucumber can be used with assertion libraries other than RSpec, but it generally is not. As, as we mentioned, one of the reasons that we chose this particular tool set is that Cucumber plus RSpec is very much a standard in the Ruby community. It's uh, everywhere you go, regardless of um, whether you're doing unit tests or whether you're doing API tests or whether you're doing integration tests or, in our case, browser tests, uh, Cucumber and RSpec are a pretty standard approach. This is going to be familiar to anyone pretty much anywhere in the Ruby world. Yes, and page object uh, pattern and page object gem that we use are becoming more and more um, mainstream. So I think that was a good pick, too. Uh, so uh, another, another comment about RSpec and Cucumber. Uh, so Cucumber was part of RSpec like years ago. And then it, it like is, it uh, split to another project, so they share some history. But yeah, RSpec is more like a unit testing library, and Cucumber is more of a communication tool, in my opinion. So those are the big differences. Uh, are there any more questions about that or anything else? Or yes. Or we can just wrap up. Okay. Go ahead. So that's RSpec is talking to Selenium, that's right. Sorry. Is that Airspec, which is talking to Selenium, or? 
no, no, no. So, no, no. Uh, Ars pick and cucumber. Ars pick and cucumber are. Go ahead. Selenium, all Selenium is, is a way to drive a browser. Uh, Selenium is the tool that, um, that tells the browser what to do. Um, so, uh, and, and Selenium is what knows about the document object model, and Selenium is what uh, knows about what elements are on the page, whether those elements are accessible, and how. Um, so we are uh, using the page object framework uses is a wrapper for Selenium that, uh, that understands a particular way of addressing the elements within pages. Um, we then take the information that Selenium reports by way of the page object framework and we check that against our assumptions using our spec. Okay. But in a nutshell, Selenium, all Selenium does is drive the browser and nothing else. Yeah, that's right. That answers my question. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, if there are any more questions, let me know. Or, like, I would, like, in a minute or two, I would just like to wrap up and, and like, re repeat what, what we did today. And then we can, uh, we have, like, a half an hour left. Uh, or are we, like, do we, Kim, uh, is, will there be a break or what's the plan? Well, if, if we change then the activity, I think we can then go directly to the either path or start okay. doing something, okay. something so different. Let me just like uh, tell you what I did in the last couple of minutes before we start answering answer question, uh, questions. So I, I made a commit. So we take a look at It's a little small, but um, so I, I made a commit of the code that we changed. Then I pushed it to Garrett. So we use, so with this command git review, I pushed it to Garrett, and it's now visible here. I, I can make this. So uh, this is Garrett. Let me go to home screen. Uh, we use, uh, oh. we use, Garrett as a, instead of GitHub for hosting our repositories, and we use it as a code uh, code review tool. Uh, I'll, I'll show you the code review real quick. Uh, we do have a Git, GitHub mirror, so if uh, you prefer to work like in a, in a GitHub way with forking repositories and sending uh, pull requests, feel free to do so. We have tools that will uh, communicate between uh, GitHub and our Garrett in install. So this is uh, our GitHub mirror. All the links uh, are in, in the meeting page. So if you go to the meeting page and to the code section, you will uh, find links to the Garrett repository and uh, um, Git, uh, GitHub repository. Uh, if you take a look at this commit, this is the code that I just pushed up there. So it, this is the commit message scenario. I just made a note that we wrote it during the workshop. Uh, I've added a few people that I know are in the um, in, in the hangout. Uh, so Kim, Rachel, Chris, and Tomislav as the reviewers. So all of them have a chance to go here, take a look at the code. For example, let's let's see. So we, we do have some um, Jenkins jobs that will check if the syntax is fine and so on. So it helps reviewers. Like if, if if Jenkins says, oh, you committed something and like it completely it's completely broken, like it, it, it like it's even not valid Ruby code, like reviewers will have more information. So this is what we did. This is the diff that I wanted to change you uh, to, to show you. So uh, at the bottom is white space. So we just added a new scenario. We added uh, a new step here, and we added a new element to the uh, to the page. And this is all we did. And as you can see, it really checked something. It broke when we said the window should not appear, and it worked fine when we said the window should appear. And uh, it was that easy. And, and that's all there is to it. So. When the reviewers, so the workflow that goes, like when you create the code, when you commit it and push to Garrett or GitHub, uh, when you push it to GitHub, it will end up in, in Garrett anyway. We have some communication between the two. 
uh, you can either Chris and I both monitor the repository uh, so we will add ourselves as a reviewer if you don't and reviewers now have a chance of uh, we don't of, of commenting on the code and uh, some people uh, have a chance uh, have a, um, privileges of uh, merging it into master so whenever oh I, I made a mistake and, and uh, committed for master oh so we should create a topic so it'll work. I just fixed the problem. So uh, a, a Git workflow is to always make new changes in a, in a branch, never into master. So I just made it here. I just made a change in Garrett and I in a in a topic branch called workshop. Uh, we never merge the code in, in uh, only in the case of like extreme emergency. Uh, you can self-merge the code into the master branch. Uh, the usual uh, workflow is that somebody else will uh, will make a review, and if everything's fine, we'll make the merge into the master. I I wouldn't go too deep into the Git because that's even another part, uh, the Git Gary yeah. part. So I think we should just, go back to the to topic of the workshop. Yeah, I just wanted to mention. So. Yeah, uh, we have a question in the chat from uh, George. Um, so the in Cucumber, any step, any given when or then step can optionally take a second argument, which is and. That's when you have multiple conditions for, for a particular step. You can have multiple things that must be true at the start for a given. You can have multiple actions that you take under when. Uh, you can have multiple results that should be checked uh, in, a, in a then statement. Um, so any one of these ands can be, you can, in any given winner then can also have ands. And it's our, simply our convention that each of these steps is indented two spaces. Correct. Uh, if, I, I think, look, is there, Chris, Kim, is there anything that I forgot to say? Or I'm... I think we went through everything now. Uh, if there are any questions, or uh, we can pair now yeah. with people. I Go do. Ahead. I do have a question. You hard code the fact that you are visiting the page of Selenium user two, or is that? And, and I sorting around the repo. I see that someone you can pass around an argument for visiting a specific page. What what's the best practice for that? I mean, is that regular to to have a hard coded page? Okay, so uh, I'll I'll repeat the question just to make sure I understood what what you're asking. So yeah, sure. yeah. you're saying that we hard coded uh, the username here and that we are always going to the same page, um, right. and is that the best practice or not? Yes. Yeah. So I, I'm not yeah, I'm not uh, a big fan of uh, of the term best best practice, but yes, uh, it's uh, it's less than optimal. Let's let's say it like. It, uh, in my opinion, every test should make sure that everything it needs. Um, so the test should create everything it needs and should uh, clean up after itself. Um, at the moment, we are doing that just in a portion of our test, and just to make things simpler and like make some automation, and then worry about like making it really, really good later on. Uh, we just hard coded some stuff. In, in, in this case, we just hard hard coded Selenium user, uh, and and we use that user page for for this feature. But yes, it like in an ideal situation, you would uh, create a random username, a couple of random usernames, uh, log in with one, and send Wikilove to the other one, and then after the test, you would delete the couple. Uh, random users that you just created. So any other tests that, that do that at the same time or before or after this test, like nobody would step on anybody's feet. So that would be the be best practice in my opinion. Like every okay. test should be a world for itself and create everything it needs and clean up after itself. Okay, thanks. Yeah, but we are practical we, and we, we do just have a, a certain uh, kind of constraint though. One of the original goals uh, when I first started uh, with the foundation, we had no shared test environment. Um, we had no usable shared test environment. Today, 
we have a couple of really useful shared test environments. We have what we call beta labs, where we're working right now. We have what we call the test two wiki. Um, and one of the one of the goals of our uh, browser test environment, uh, browser test suite, was to actually run against these institutional shared test environments. So in that in that context, and, and Karima has run up against this. Uh, in that context, it actually does make sense to have certain things hard coded, certain users, certain pages. We want those pages always to exist in these shared test environments, and we, we want them always to have a certain form because that, that is a, the, the main target of these tests. We are actually working on a generic, uh, basically a smoke test suite that would be generic for any environment, and they'll probably run under Phantom JS and not in a particular browser. That's uh, in the process of building one of those. But a lot of the tests that you see today are really intended to run in these shared test environments that are maintained by the foundation. I have a question. Um, so, OK, I did this workshop, and now I want to try out something. Uh, realistically, what should I do? Where sh uh, there's plenty of features at, in the Wikimedia software. Uh, so where is, where is it more useful to contribute? Where do I find, uh, where do I ask, you know, next steps, next practical steps to do a first contribution in, in automated browser tasting? An excellent question, yeah. Kim. Should, Shall should I, I answer go? that? I have a couple of answers for that. Um, go ahead. One is that, like every open source project, I mean, this is, uh, it comes about because developers scratch their own itch. If you yourself have a feature of Wikipedia that you want to, that you have some investment in, you want to see this feature continue to work properly, then um, we welcome any test for that sort of feature. At the same time, we have certain priorities that are going on. If you don't have a particular feature that is important to you personally, you may want to know about some of our uh, uh, features that are under development. Uh, the visual editor is a very important feature being developed right now, and it's undergoing significant changes, and we want to have tests for that. But, but, but sorry, sorry to interrupt you, uh, because what you say makes sense, but I also have heard you saying that visual editor is not the best uh, product for a newcomer to all these because for some True. reason better. So we also, Jelco has also identified a number of what we are calling easy bugs. And Tomislav has been doing a great job for us. Um, just uh, doing some rearrangement and uh, some refactoring and making the test run without deprecation warnings was the change from Tomislav that I just uh, uh, reviewed earlier today. Um, we have a number of uh, projects where that uh, beginner should be able to tackle. And you always feel free to ask questions of Jelko or myself. Yes, OK. So you, did this list of bugs, you, you got, how you got to this list of bugs? I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll answer the question. Like I'll rephrase, Chris. So, so in short, if you want to get involved, if, if what you saw here is interesting and uh, you would like to get some training, um, feel free to join our QA mailing list. Uh, it's If you go to the meeting page and to the bottom, so let's go to get involved. There's a get involved section. Uh, there's a couple of links. One of them is to our QA mailing list. Feel free to join. Click here, enter your uh, email address and subscribe. There's no moderation, so uh, but you will get a confirmation email. And the Gmail uh, sometimes puts them into spam, so please check your spam folder. We had a few people telling, oh, like, I was not allowed to, to mailing list. Uh, that, that didn't happen. Like, we, like, we uh, allow everybody. But please check your spam or junk folder, and there will be confirmation email. And another thing, like, if you would like just to get your hands dirty and fix, like, just just commit like anything like just make the first uh, contribution and uh, as chris said thomas is doing a, a great job he already like closed like three four five of these easy bugs uh, my public to-do list is in this bugzilla and whenever i uh, find something in code that i think is easy to fix or something that uh, uh, like somebody new to the project would like um, have an easier time than something else i will Tag it with this keyword easy, and we have so at the bottom of the meeting page 
there's a link to EasyBanks, <coughs> and it will open this Bookzilla list. Uh, <coughs> just read them, pick one. Uh, if you if you can't decide, uh, just join the QA mailing list, introduce yourself, and we'll take it from there. Like just let us know what you are interested in, and we have plenty of uh, like tasks for you. If it's not here, we can we have plenty more. Does that answer the question, Kim? To me, yes. I hope to the others as well. Yeah, I have a follow-up question, actually. Um, let's say I want to test. Uh, um, I think that like gadgets are probably interesting to test. Yes. Is it? Yeah, so I want to test gadgets on my favorite home wiki. And I'm very lucky, because there is a commons Wikimedia beta on VMF Labs. So I am very lucky, but is there a beta for every wiki around, for like Wikisource or the Japanese wiki news or whatever? If it's not, uh, it could be fixed. Uh, but uh, yeah, Chris, Kim, do you know? Yes, I can. I can say something to that. Um, our beta labs environment is intended to emulate the production cluster closely. Uh, in practice, some wikis are more close to production than others. Um, mostly, uh, at this point, English Wikipedia is in pretty good shape. Uh, some of the other ones are. I know we've had a request for uh, an Arab to bring the beta Arab Wikipedia up. And there was another right to left wiki that we have an outstanding request for that needs some maintenance. So yeah, the, uh, the idea is that beta will emulate the production cluster. In practice, some of the wikis are more production-like than others. But this is based simply on, on interest. So if you are now interested in the Japanese wiki news, just push for it, and you'll get it sorted out, I'm sure. Cool. Yeah, the system administrator for the Beta Labs is a man named Antoine uh, Musso. He lives in France. Um, he's a very helpful gentleman and knows quite a lot about the wikis out there. Yeah, and uh, like just for if if there are questions that we don't have, like that we don't answer, or like for the next step for people that would like to get involved, please join the QA mailing list, and we'll like th this is the place where where everything is is going on regarding testing. Um, more questions? I have another, uh, right. but it's, it's for everybody, actually. So thanks to Chris and Jelko, I've been learning about the, the, the concept of pair programming and how, how good it is to learn and to just progress and, and get things done. So. How could we organize slowly, but actually, this pair programming among the well, the people in this in this uh, session and others we have in the mailing list and the QA mailing list? How do you think we should get start to get organized with the pair programming? Um, I would just say join the QA mailing list and let us know when when is a good time for you. We can start with like an an hour a week and take it from there. Like Rachel and I, I'm not sure if Rachel joined. Um, Rachel and I are uh, pairing a few times a week. Chris and I at least once a week. Uh, Chris also pairs with Rachel. I, I think I, c I can say that bo both Chris and I are like, depending on our other uh, like meetings and, and, and other stuff that we have to do, but we are open to at least a few pairing sessions a week. So just join the QA mailing list and let us know what, what your interests are and when would be a good time for you. So Chris is in the US, I'm in Europe, so we, we cover like half of the planet, so we could arrange a time that could be good for, for everybody. Okay, so the idea would be to start dancing with you and then try to find other dancers because I guess it, you don't scale much. <laughs> yes, so the idea would be that Chris and I would uh, teach <coughs> Rachel. So Rachel is our intern for this summer. So we would teach Rachel. Uh, Thomas Love is doing good. I, I, I know um, a few other people from here. Uh, we would work with the people that, that are interested, and then like we would just uh, like 
they would just take on from there. So they would teach somebody else and, and so on and so on. So the Chris and I don't scale. Yeah, that, that's that's a good point. Well, but it's good to start with something. I think yeah. it's important. I don't think we have. So Chris, do you think so? We, we we do have a few people that are more or less like involved in browser testing, but I think the two of us are, are the only one available at the moment, right? Yeah, I think so right now. Um, uh, Rachel will be, uh, Michelle will be, but right now it's it's uh, Jalko and myself are the primary contact. Um, this is Rachel, and um, I had a thought maybe. You could schedule a session like this once a month, a training session, and um, you know, and then if the same people came every month or most of them, then you, you know, maybe could get around and work with them individually or explain different concepts or something. So a lot of people that's, could be worked out with at once. That's a good idea. I, I think we should have a workshop every month or two, depending on, on how how we uh, are able to arrange it, and every workshop could cover another topic. But I, I think we should also have pairing sessions because in, in workshop like this, it's more of like a lecture format. We can't really help anybody. And I think like when, like you could probably re tell Rachel like when when the two of us work. Like I think it's there's a lot of uh, like learning going on. Like and and when I, I know when I work with Chris or with somebody else, I learn a lot and and I, I can transfer some some of my knowledge. So. I think there's place for bo both like this workshop type uh, events and pairings. What might be really useful is uh, getting a or pairing up once someone thinks that they're mostly done and they need to get things through the Garrett step. Um, just uh, as a software engineer, with I've done this for a long time, and uh, if you've not used Garrett before, it it took me a while to figure out. Uh, and I've done this kind of thing for years and years. So uh, for someone who isn't used to it, just helping them through the Garrett step would be really, really, really helpful, I think. Yeah, that's, that's why we didn't cover Garrett. And when I came to Garrett, Kim said, no, 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 let, let's, go, let's not go there this time. Because yeah, Garrett is not the, like the most user-friendly tool that we have, uh, and I used to hate it, uh, but now like I, I got used to it, and yeah. If if anybody is able to figure out everything, but like how to send this code to Garrett, so there are two options, let us know, and we'll help you up with Garrett. And you can also use GitHub, and like if you prefer GitHub, just send code there, and like we'll take it from there. Uh, Jelko, are you seeing George's question here in um, the chat? Yes, let me see. How do you manage cucumber steps? I know that the feature steps I've worked on can have slight variations, which needlessly creates more step definitions. Do you have a step library to see if a step definition has already been created? Mm. No. Uh, we 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 do a review. I do a review of the steps from time to time. I do some cleanup if I see there there's something uh, really similar. I'll, I'll extract it, but uh, I don't like we we try to um, organize this, the steps in, in in files and then solve them alphabetically. So it's it's more obvious when some, when something uh, is is like, duplicated. But I don't think uh, we have a good way at the moment. Chris? Yeah, I can speak to to that in some detail. Um, so George, a couple of things. One is that uh, if you inadvertently duplicate a step that already exists, Cucumber will give you a warning. Cucumber will actually inform you that you have, in fact, duplicated a step. Um, one of the things that I encounter from time to time is that I will inadvertently write it down the name of a step that already exists but needs to be subtly different than the step that, that is in place already. Um, but uh, and that can be annoying to have to make it the language of your new step different enough from the existing step to uh, to get it to do what you want. That helps uh, answer the question. Uh, I, I see there's more questions in, in the Hangout chat. So uh, uh, the one that posted uh, uh, that Kim posted uh, from a stranger's name, dr zero something. Uh, 
So somebody asked if I could go uh, into some depth on the support primitives in features support pages and directory. Um, well, I like I, I think we are. I'm not sure. Like uh, Chris Kim, do well, like should I'll we? I'll do that. Yeah. Let me, uh, Joko. If you could show, can you show something from a steps file? Sure. Let me share my screen. Oh, again. the steps file. As you're writing the step, as you're actually actually as you're involved in writing the the cucumber step, what's going to happen uh, is you'll have you always will say that on a particular page, and your page, in this case the Wikilove page, this is an object in Ruby. And, um, and then what follows the, the, uh, the, the page that you're working with is an abstraction of the element. And this is free text. In this case, it doesn't have to be Wikilove window. It could be um, XYZ ABC. This is an abstraction. It is a, uh, it is a handle for the page element, and we can create that handle in our steps file on our page object using any text we want. Um, and then the, for the rest of the entire suite, whenever we use this element on this page, that is the handle by which we will address it. That's our abstraction for, for the element on this page. So, uh, when, so this is, we, we always have the page with a dot, followed by the abstraction of the page element, followed by the assertion and the argument for that assertion. Um, at the, what you'll often find in more naive implementations is rather than having an abstraction like with you love window, you'll have the actual uh, address of the element on the page. And what the problem with that is that anytime you, you have a, what this gives you is duplicate code. You'll have Wikilove window mentioned several times in several tests. And then when that, uh, when that element on the page changes, you have a big, big, big maintenance problem because every time you've, you've defined this in your tests, uh, you have to change every single instance of that. So what we have instead is an abstraction. And then if we go to our pages file, um, if we move out of the steps file and we move to the pages file, what we'll find is we have a very a uh, specific way to identify these elements on these page. So in this case, we have a div, and then our handle is the first argument inside the parenthesis. That is our free text abstraction for this element on this page. And so uh, any time we, uh, we use the Wikilove window in a test, we'll just call it Wikilove window because we made, that, we made up that text. That's how we get to this element. And it's only the final argument in this, uh, in this line in this page file where we actually reach into the DOM itself and we find the actual identifier on the actual page and that's how we find that this thing called the Wikilove window. So this div may become a span someday. This, uh, this uh, class may become an ID someday. Regardless of how that happens, we're, this is always going to be the Wikilove window to all of our tests forever and ever. Uh, more that's questions? A, that's a general page object. As you, instead of using an element on a page, you use an abstraction of that element in all of your tests. And this is just an institutional uh, way to implement the page object design pattern. Uh, okay. We have 15 more minutes. Are there um, any more questions? Okay, well, we are like we we are we have ten more minutes. Oh, is there? Uh, George asks, is there a reason why page object doesn't support Capybara? Uh, that would be a, a question for Cheesy, I think. Uh, Kim, do you have a question? Do do you know maybe? As far as I know, Capybara is another uh, like API on top of Selenium, like Waterwave driver is. So I think. 
Like it's just uh, that uh, the Cheesy decided <coughs> to support Selenium WebDriver API and Water WebDriver API and didn't have time to support another API. Is is there a reason you that you prefer Capybara? Uh, so George well, asked another question. Uh, yeah, uh -huh. I'll answer that. That uh, Capybara is not just just not on our radar, but um, the. Uh, Let's talk about WebDriver, though. Um, Selenium, what we're using is Selenium 2.0, also known as WebDriver. Uh, it is radically different from Selenium 1.0. Selenium 1.0 worked by opening a browser inside of a frame and injecting JavaScript into that frame, and it was fragile in many ways. WebDriver, but one thing to note, the Selenium, the original Selenium API was very large. The WebDriver API is very small. It's intended to be only a small set of tools, a very basic set of tools, a toolbox from which to uh, generate your own API for your own application. Now, we want a more general API than that. So the Water project, Web Application Testing in Ruby, Water itself actually predates Selenium. It's a test, it was uh, the original useful open source test tool before Selenium ever existed. And there's a guy named Yari Bakken that, uh, for when WebDriver came out, when Selenium 2.0 WebDriver came out and had this very small API, Yari thought that it would be good to have the large water API as part of WebDriver. So he has actually, water is a very sophisticated API that wraps the very basic Selenium WebDriver API. Um, Water gives you some very, very neat tools. In the Selenium API, for example, you cannot identify an element with more than one uh, identifier. So uh, water gives you this. We can identify an element with both class and name. We can identify an element with both um, text and index. Water gives us this. Water gives us a lot more power than we would have with just a pure raw Selenium API. And that's why, why Jeff put it into the page object uh, gem in Ruby. Uh, George had another question. Um, uh, do you guys use Water Web Driver or Selenium? And he said he doesn't like Capybara too much. So to answer his question, so we use both. Uh, so Water Web Driver uh, uses Selenium Web Driver, so Water Web Driver RubyGem uses Selenium WebDriver. It's just a wrapper around Selenium WebDriver, providing nicer API, a, a bit more high-level API. And Selenium WebDriver gem, RubyGem is actually Ruby bindings, for, uh, Selenium Ruby bindings. So we, to answer the question, we use both. S Selenium has several several Ruby bindings. Um, I think like the officially supported ones are. Ruby, uh, Python, C Sharp, Java, and from recently JavaScript, but I'm not sure about for JavaScript. And there are binding in, in bindings, in like unofficial ones, in several other languages, including PHP. We have ten more minutes. Oh, so George I asks. Have, uh, I do have a question. Um, let's say uh, I have a question about the the chain of background scenario. In our case, a background is when I visit the user page of Selenium User 2, and I click Wiki Love, and this is the, uh, the background for all our tests. But let's say that we want to make a test when I visit, I don't know, a file page or an article page, because we want to test that Wiki Love is not present. That should be, we, we might want to do that, right? Shall we, like, refactor all of our testing to make it different, or create a new feature? Um, what is the best way to do that? There's, uh, as usual, there, it depends. There are several uh, ways we could do that. Yeah, one of them would be to refactor the existing uh, file and uh, remove the, the step that's not uh, reused by others. So let me let me share my screen and show you what. Okay. I'll, yeah, I'll rephrase the question just to, to make sure I understood it. So I hope you can see my screen. So what? What uh, what you asked, I think, is uh, what would happen if we wanted to check um, that this 
open it. So uh, if we wanted to check that this appears on Selenium user page but doesn't appear on my page, this uh, heart icon, hmm. right? Was that the yes. question? Yes. Okay. And, and how we would refactor the, the feature of file. So one way would be to, to uh, so si since this, and I click Wikilove, this step would no longer uh, be shared by, by all the other scenarios, right? So that's, that was the question. What to do with this step? Now it's in background. Uh, what should we do? So one, um, one way would be to, uh, to, uh, to create another feature file. Uh, this one could be called Wikilove, um, I don't know, whatever. Like, I have no ideas at the moment. So we would create another feature file and just um, have these two steps in, in, in background. Or we could refactor this one and move this step to every, every um, scenario that like this. And then look, all those scenarios that doesn't. So. Mm. We type there. Uh, does that answer the question? Yeah, you can start with the end, uh, with the end step, the scenario. It's not yes, much. you could. Oh, you could. Oh. You could. No, well, you could. I, I did. I did a mistake. So, given. Could like technically, there's no point. Uh, th there's no reason why you shouldn't. But I, I, I would complain. Like I would give you a minus one review uh, for this. So then I just did it myself. Uh, I would. I think that every scenario should read for itself. So if you are not like if you don't care about the background, you know that the test like has set up everything it needs. Then you should read the scenario as a story for itself. And when the story begins with an end, like it doesn't really sound good. So I would say, oh, I would say when here, I, I would change these to when. Was that the, the question? So we yes. would say when I click Wikilove, the Wikilove window appears. I think that reads better than and I click Wikilove like it's. But I'm just starting the story, and you're starting with an end, so that's like not not a good one. But yes, technically this could be an end. Like yeah, technically you could make them all ends or all ends. Like Cucumber doesn't really care. Um, oh, it's okay. just it's just a convention. So given steps are doing the setup. So uh, given steps. So I I think sh this should be a given also. So just one thing, uh, there's five minutes less uh, okay. left. There's some questions now. Uh, but in any case, uh, uh, Jelko can stay a bit longer to answer, or there's the mailing list for that. Yeah. But uh, I, I can't stand right now. Uh, um, I, I thought I'll, I'll be able to stay, uh, to stay uh, longer. But I have to go. Uh, I have a, a family obligation. Then um, maybe you want to go fast through the questions you have in the chat. Yeah, I'll, I'll go quickly through the questions. And uh, please, use the QA mailing list. I don't know how many times I've, I've mentioned it today, but it's really the best way uh, to communicate, because other people, will, other people will probably have the same question as you. And when you ask it there, and I'll answer it once, and like everybody will see the answer. Yeah, so it's Carol not... is also saying has a meeting in five minutes, so let's just. Yeah. Uh, let, let me see if. Uh... What was uh, should should I go through real quickly to the questions, or should we just end now and point people to the QA mailing list? I believe we're caught up on the questions. There, there are more. Oh, headless there. browsers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, okay. Let's, let's do something. Since apparently, well, I mean, it's also the morning in in uh, in the U.S., so people are more likely to have jobs and etc. Uh, to attend right now. So uh, please look at uh, look at these questions here, and if you find that there's something that hasn't been answered, please uh, answer in the mailing list. We are assuming that anybody here is subscribed there, and in any case, uh, I want to thank everybody for these two hours of your time. I hope the experiment uh, was satisfactory. Uh, any ideas on how to improve this? 
uh, please share them with us. Any topics that you want us to focus, uh, please share, share this with us. We have run already like two, three sessions that are way introductory. And I think now it starts to be the time to find uh, sessions for the next steps. Please use the QA mailing list. Uh, any question <laughs> that we didn't ask or answer, just ask there. Um, and see you on the next workshop or on the next pairing. Very good. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody.